Hey guys, JohnnyCrips2000 here. Welcome to my latest Let's Play. Today I'm going to be doing a Let's Play of X-Men, Children of the Atom. And look at that glorious Sega Saturn logo there. Yes, we are moving to the Saturn for this one. And uh, let me just get this right off the bat, right away. Yes, you saw the disclaimer. Yes, I am using an action replay for this game. I am saddened that I had to resort to that, but honestly, I have a perfectly good excuse. And that excuse is, I suck at this game. Yeah, I don't know what it is about this game. This game is very hard for me. It's always been very hard. I haven't been able to beat it, like, legitimately. You know, this version, which is the, uh, the Sega Saturn version, obviously. I haven't been able to beat it in the arcade. I've never been able to beat this game for some reason or another. So, but the thing is, I, I want it to, you know... I wanted to do this game and I kind of need to because I want to eventually be able to get through to the uh, to the Versus series. Uh, by the way, I'm showing this, the difficulty there is on 4 out of 8 stars. So this is like the normal difficulty. And uh, this is the character select screen. So you got a nice mixture of the X-Men. You have 6 X-Men and 4 villains with 2 villains missing, which is uh, Juggernaut and... Magneto. So really, it's six X-Men and six villains. Just the two villains aren't selectable here. Um, but yeah, I've never been able to beat this game by myself, and I have to beat it because this is, by most people's accounts, a precursor to the Versus series. Not a lot of people knew that. Um, well, not not people that were introduced to the Versus series after the initial Marvel vs. Capcom. So, yeah, this is a precursor to the Versus series, and um, as you guys can already tell right there, yes, I am taking damage, and then my life is already coming back to full health. Like I said, guys, I'm sorry, but I, I tried so hard. I don't know what it is about this game. I'm pretty good at fighting games. I'm decent, but good lord, I couldn't get through maybe like the second or third like stage without having a lot of trouble with this game so I I had to resort to to this so you know if I hadn't resorted to using an action replay this game would have you know I would have been I would have no chance at showing this game off and that's the sad truth so I decided to, to uh, use Cyclops because I figured you know what people hate Cyclops right <laughs> Uh, everybody thinks that, you know, everybody kind of sees him as the douchey leader of the X-Men that nobody really likes. So I figured, what, you know, what better representation of my le my Let's Play of this game than by choosing Cyclops. I mean, just think of it this way, guys. I could have been even more cheap and just had it so that I could have infinite uh, super. But, no, the, the only problem here is the life. So anyway, we beat Wolverine. Wolverine, by the way, has been in every single Marvel vs. game ever. He's in this one, he's in the next game, which is Marvel Super Heroes. He was in all the Versus games so far that included Marvel. So he's sort of like the poster child of the Marvel Versus series, actually. And uh, as you guys notice there, the I, I am cutting out the loading times for this game. You saw the first loading screen um, before I fought Wolverine, just to show off how long they are. But yes, I am cutting out the loading screens, so the game does not load this quickly. This game, um, I forgot to mention, uh, initially came out in December of 1994 for the arcade, and later it saw a release for the Sega Saturn in 1996 here in the United States, 1997 on PC, which I actually hadn't heard of, and 1998 for the PS1. For all intents and purposes, you want to get the Sega Saturn version. It's obviously the, the best, you know, best version of it. I don't know how the PC version handles, but personally, I'm not a PC gamer at all. I don't care for it whatsoever. I don't care if there's a Steam sale or whatever. I'm just, I'm a console gamer, all right? So don't care for that. Um, PS1, not that great for fighting games, or not that great for 2D fighting games, really. So if you can, try to get the Sega Saturn version. So right, this is Storm, and you guys will see soon enough, um, just fighting these guys, just seeing me kind of struggle with these opponents just how good lord they are I mean look at this she's like going back and forth now mind you I did show off that this is the normal difficulty there is not that big of a difference in my estimation between this difficulty and just one out of eight stars difficulty because believe me I tried um, I think that would have been even more sad but uh, yeah that that was storm 
She's very quick, and there's a reason why a lot of people use her in tournaments and things like that. So now we're going off to Psylocke. Psylocke I actually really like. Um, she was very popular in the 90s. She kind of just fell out of popularity. You know, going into the 2000s, she hasn't really been in that. Well, I shouldn't say that because I haven't been into. I haven't been reading much, much, uh, uh, paying attention as much to comics since the 90s. So she may have had a big storyline as of late, but I just don't know about it. Uh, she certainly didn't come back in Marvel vs. Capcom 3, so that was sad. She kind of got replaced by X-23. And uh, one of the things that I liked about this game is that they had a nice mix of well-known you know, characters from the X-Men series and lesser knowns. So obviously they had the, the you know, all the X-Men are pretty much well-known. They, they were missing a couple, obviously, like uh, Rogue, Jean Grey, um, Gambit, Nightcrawler, and uh, who else was missing? That was pretty big. Beast, I guess, but out of all of those, the only ones that haven't made it so far to the Versa series in any way, shape, or form have been uh, Nightcrawler and Beast. Don't know why that is. Maybe Capcom just has a thing against blue-haired people. I don't know. Anyway, Psylocke is a bit tricky, can be tricky sometimes. I mean, she's tricky all the time for me in this game, just because I suck. <laughs> but uh, she she has this thing where she makes duplicates of herself, and I have no idea how this is going to show up on, on YouTube because of its horrible compression. But uh, she does duplicate herself. She is going to show it off eventually in this playthrough, I think. And uh, that can be tricky because sometimes you don't even know... Like, she, she makes multiples of herself, and like right here so you actually don't know you can't tell which one is the real one so it could be the one furthest from you or it could be the one closest to you. you you really don't know so you just have to kind of aim aimlessly at all of her little uh, illusions there until you hit the right one which can be pretty cool one of the other things that I really like about this game that was really you know that that I will say kind of got um, Hmm, I should have put it. Marvel. Let, let, let me just put it this way. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is considered the best game in the series. Personally, and I know this, I'm going to get a lot of flack for this, but personally, I don't see it that way. For tournament, maybe. For just, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I know that it's still used in tournaments like EVO and stuff like that. Marvel vs. Capcom 2, and I love the game. I have it, but... I prefer some of the earlier games, honestly. Like, I would, I still prefer Marvel vs. Capcom 1 to Mar Marvel vs. Capcom 2. And uh, one of the reasons, just presentation-wise, I just like it better. Um, that's just me. But, you know, for, for starters, the, the music is, in my opinion, is, is horrible in Marvel vs. Capcom 2. And the backgrounds, which is what I'm trying to get at here, the backgrounds for this game are amazing. I love how animated they are. I love how, as opposed to Marvel vs. Capcom 2, they don't stand out. Because Marvel vs. Capcom 2 had this weird 3D, you know, backgrounds. And they weren't as lively. They weren't as... I don't know. They just stood out, in my opinion, against uh, the 2D sprites. But the backgrounds in this game and in games, um, in every game until Marvel's Capcom 2, really, were just amazing. So here you have Omega Red. Omega Red was one of those uh, villains that really not a lot of people had heard of until um, this game came out. I mean, when I say a lot of people, I mean like casual people, you know, even video game fans who were introduced to a lot of these characters because of this game and the Versus series. Omega Red is actually another... If I remember correctly, he was another subject of the, um, I want to say Weapon X, maybe? I, I know he, I know he's Russian. Actually, I don't think he was part of Weapon X. I, I may be mistaken, but his, his whole shtick is that he, he uses those little tendril things, those little whips of his, and he's sort of like a keep away character, but a little bit more aggressive and a little bit faster than Dalsim. And I, I always thought he was pretty cool, although he, yeah, he's a bit of a cheap ass. And this is where I start getting to the point where this is the reason where I had to resort to using an action replay. Now, Iceman has only ever been in two Marvel vs. games in the entirety of the series. He's only ever been in this game, which is the one where he debuted, and he was also in Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Now, you ask anybody who 
has played those two games, and they will tell you just how freaking cheap Iceman is. Now, look at how much health he still has, and I've been shooting him with everything. Wait until I actually get my super, and you will see the main reason why people absolutely hate this man. Mind you, I love Iceman from the comics, and I love his appearance in the, uh, the X-Men movie, although I really wish they could have done more. Now look at that. I just did my super, and he got no chip damage. So yeah, Iceman in this game and in Marvel vs. Capcom 2 gets absolutely no chip damage. So he could pretty much, you know, turtle the entire time, the entire fight, hit you at least once, and unless you come up to him and try to grab him, he will win just by doing absolutely nothing because you can't damage him until you, un unless you hit him, you know, dead on. And that, along with the fact that, you know, this game is can already be kind of cheap in my estimation, you know, in my, um, you know, in, in my experiences, that can really make some of these battles really annoying. I mean, look at how much health he's already taken away from me. He's just, like, hulking up right now. And there is nothing I can do because he takes no chip damage. Look at that. Look at that. No chip damage whatsoever. So... You'll find that in, in this in this playthrough, I actually get a lot of time overs. Or not a lot, but I do get a, I, I get a good amount of time overs. And the reason is that these guys just do not go down. Like they just take so much damage and they they're they're too perfect in my opinion. And I absolutely love this game, but good god, it it, it, it makes it really hard to really enjoy this game. So I mean as much as I'm saying like how hard it is and things like that, I actually do like this game, but Honestly, the the difficulty of this game really makes it hard for me to recommend it, really, to even X-Men fans. By the way, that's a horrible portrait over there of Iceman. What's wrong with this jaw? <laughs> and here we go. We are going up against the Sentinel. The, Sento is, the Sentinel is, oddly enough, one of the few people that I actually have a fun time fighting. I think it might have something to do with the fact that he's just big and bulky and I have an easier time doing a lot of combos on him. So you actually see me kind of beasting him at some point, like right now. And I actually thought it was a good, a good, eye, or a good idea and an awesome, you know, little premise to include one of these guys. Even though in the comics, he'll, I think he'll actually be a lot taller than this. I mean, there are different versions of the Sentinel, but I, I always thought it was kind of cool to ha include one of these guys. But yeah, he is kind of clunky, and, and I think in Marvel vs. Capcom 2, he does have a lot of cheap moves. A lot of uh, range moves. That's the thing that he that the Sentinel does do best. He's a good range fighter, and he'll just... He, he's a good... Um, yeah, he's sort of like a mixture between... Say like a strange mixture between Dalsum, like a keep away character, and sort of like a you know a, a Ryu sort of because he does have like a lot of keep away, but he also has a lot of projectile moves as well. But again, he is big and clunky, so I am able to do stuff like that, like own him, like a boss. Now, if I could only do that in with every other character, oh, life would be so much easier. Now, before I get to the next guy, uh, you'll notice that um, you only have to fight eight people. And you notice here that I actually, I, I'm actually editing in these last or these next three characters in because normally you would only have to fa uh, fight six of the eight characters, like six of the eight collectible, uh, not collectible, the selectable characters. Um, actually, what am I talking about? No, you know, you only. Oh, whatever. Normally, we wouldn't have fought Colossus, uh, Spiral, and Silver Samurai because the next character that we would actually fight is Juggernaut, who is the sub-boss, and then Magneto following that. So we wouldn't normally have gotten the chance to see these guys, but I figured, you know what? Since this is sort of like a cheap, you know, let's play, and I openly admit that, I might as well just show off all the characters that I can anyway, you know, sort of like to make it up for you guys, uh, to you guys. But, um, for having me use the action replay so you're welcome now this is the prime example of why you know I just cannot beat this game Colossus is a cheap bastard I mean good lord like look at how much damage I've done to him the entire time he just doesn't want to go down and mind you he's a close quarter fighter 
And watch this next round, because he's com completely owned me in this next round. Booyah. Grab. Midair grab. Grab. He has his little armor thing, so I can't do much damage there. Wait for it. Wait for it. He's going to owe me, guys. If I didn't have this code in, I would have died long ago. Trip. Trip. Jumps over that. Trips. Grab. Throw me. Now he's got me cornered in the, in the... You know, he's got me trapped in the corner. Throw me again. Throw me again. Super armor, so I can't do much uh, combos to him. Kick me. Kick me again. Kick me again. Throw... Or... Mm, that's a power driver there. Kick, kick, kick. Anti-air. Now I'm dizzy. Now he's going to do his super throw. By the way, I do like uh, the background. Just so much chaos. Grab me out of my super. Slam me down. Now he's cornering me again in the corner. Did my super. Did crap damage to him because it's chip damage only. Anti-air move. Now, mind you, had he done that, had he been that aggressive the entire time, this match would have lasted all of, like, one minute. It's ridiculous how hard these guys are. Anyway, this is Spiral. Spiral is actually one of those characters that a lot of people don't know much about, and I don't blame them, because I, the first time I saw Spiral in this game, I was like, who the hell is Spiral? Spiral is actually from the X-Men um, comic books, obviously. She also appeared in the X-Men animated series. So if you want to look it up, um, you know, you want to see a little bit more of Spiral, I suggest you go look that up. By the way, this stage is awesome. Um, she is part of the Mojo world. She is a sorceress, I believe. And the Mojo world is ruled by this guy named uh, Mojo, <laughs> obviously. And um, it's like this sort of strange world that's obsessed with television. So Mojo, who's the ruler, who, who we'll see in a minute, or we'll see his likeness. There he is. Um, he kind of entertains his people of, of this bizarre universe. Um, actually, not Mojo world. Mojo verse, sorry. And he entertains them by doing a lot of like television, different televisions, but he's very like manipulating in that, like, just to give you guys an, an idea of how the X-Men got introduced, they were introduced because they were taken to this Mojo verse in order to be sort of like a reality television. Um, I believe like they were, they were forced to fight for the entertainment of the people of the Mojo verse. And uh, one of those people that they had to fight, I believe, was Spiral. So, I always applauded Capcom for including somebody, like, as sort of what the, you know, what the crap, who the heck is this, like Spiral. She's pretty cool, though. As you guys can see there, she uses teleportation. She switches your position with hers a lot, which can be really disorienting. And she does, she is a very good keep away character, as you guys can see there. She kind of develops all these knives and things like that and she does she does have one of the coolest um, supers which she will perform on me very soon if she grabs you like she will with me very soon right there she like does a multi-hit combo and turns into every character in the game which is so awesome but we beat her of course because I'm a cheap bastard see Capcom if you make your games too hard I'm a cheap bastard too and now we are facing Silver Samurai, which is the last character that you would get the chance to fight before the sub-boss and the regular boss in this game. Uh, Silver Samurai, admittedly, I don't know all that much about, but if you watch the new Wolverine movie, which came out this past summer, then you would know a lot more about him. The only difference is the Silver Samurai in that game is actually um, more like a like a cyborg, like a robot kind of thing, not to give you know too many spoilers away whereas this guy is an actual person I can't remember if he's actually a mutant or not but um, yeah he's pretty cool I honestly think that the only reason he was really put in here is because you know he's Japanese and obviously Capcom is Japanese but it is he is cool nonetheless and by the way I haven't mentioned this before but the the, the sprites in this game are amazing these are probably the best looking um, that the X-Men have ever been as far as, you know, sprite work and, and things like that. You know, a lot better than the, the sprites that were in X-Men, the arcade machine. As, as awesome as that game is, the, you know, these sprites just kill it. 
they just are so much better. They, there's so much animation, there's so much personality, and I love the the sprite work done in this game. You know, as much as I suck at this game, like I, I will admit that. I mean, like I said, guys, like I, I really do love this game. I, I, I play it a lot. I love it. I'm a huge Marvel fan. I'm a huge X-Men fan. So just getting the chance to play with these guys is a thrill every time. It just... I, I really wish that, that the, the difficulty just wouldn't completely own me every time I play it. Then it would, you know, I would play this a lot more often. So anyway, we, beat, we defeated our final normal, you know, playable character. And now we're going on to the sub-boss, which in this case is Juggernaut. Get excited, folks. So as you guys can see here, Juggernaut is huge. He is powerful as all get out. If you were to play this in a normal game, you guys can see there. It's kind of hard to see, but every time he hits me, he pretty much takes almost like a quarter to a third of my life, which is just ridiculous. So you can imagine how hard this guy is to fight normally if you didn't have, you know, if you weren't like a cheap bastard like I was playing this and using an action replay. I mean, honestly, the Juggernaut isn't... Mm, I shouldn't say he's all that hard because he is because he does deal you know he dishes out just ridiculous amounts of damage but you know he won't combo you like other people you know he won't be as combo friendly as somebody like say um, like Magneto or Storm but it's just the fact that he's so freaking you know he's so freaking powerful you I mean you guys can see there like just how much damage he's already dealt to me I mean collectively right like you can't see it but collectively I would have been dead a long time ago. The Juggernaut is a, a, a fun character to use, although I, if I remember correctly, he wasn't in the PlayStation 1 version? Maybe? I can't remember. It was either this game or Marvel Super Heroes, which he does return in. Which I will be playing, by the way. That that game, I promise I won't use Action Replay. For, for God, for some reason, it's this game. This game, just I've never been able to beat it. It's always been hard for me. But yeah, next game, uh, he does return to Marvel Super Marvel Superheroes, sorry. Which is the spiritual successor to this game, and he does return in that game as a selectable character, no less. He does um Juggernaut does actually get this one move. I think I think he's already shown it actually. Maybe just haven't been paying attention. Where he actually grabs the um, a piece of um, like a piece of the beam, which obviously didn't make the cut to Marvel, Marvel superheroes because it wouldn't have made sense. And booyah, we beat Juggernaut. Cheap tactic with uh, chip damage, but nonetheless, we beat him. And now we're going on to the final boss of this of this game, which of course is Magneto. Now I shouldn't talk all that much about Magneto because you all know him. He's a badass. You've seen him in the movies. He's pretty much in every kind of, you know material for X-Men, he's gonna be in it. And my god, he's never looked that, you know, he's never looked as awesome. This is probably my favorite version of Magneto from from any X-Men game. You know, better than the one from X-Men the Arcade Machine, you know. That one just kinda came off as humorous, honestly. I, I blame, I you know, I blame the quote, Welcome to Die, which started so many memes. But, uh... Better than that version, better than the version in X-Men Legends, better than... I'll go ahead and even say even better than the, the, the latest one in, you know, Marvel vs. Capcom 3. There's just something about his sprite work in this game that just makes him that much more awesome. And uh, Magneto can be tricky. He can do a lot, of, like, as you guys saw there at the beginning, he does sort of like... Um, he floats in midair and, you know, drains down your, you know, rains down on you with projectiles and things like that. He does have a force field, as you guys saw there, where, you know, he, you can't hit him no matter what. If I remember correctly, I cannot remember for the life of me what the, the force field actually does. That small one, the small electrical one, just don't hit him is, is my thing. And like I said, the, the backgrounds for the for this game are amazing. I don't know if you guys have actually been paying attention to the backgrounds. I mean, that's just something that I do. But, God, they're so nice. They're so amazing. There's so much to do. There's so much to see. The other thing, too, is that I love the music in this game. Just, you know, absolutely awesome. 
So you guys can see there, he's he's got his uh, his little force field there, and I can't hit him because he has his force field. Now you have to hit him, but that'll drop his his energy thing. But again, I don't have that much experience fighting him because I can never get to him. So I don't really have all that many tips for you guys. Um, I am sorry for that, but again, had this game been a little bit more balanced, maybe. The only other game that I just absolutely will not be able to beat, and uh, I am going to have to resort to using an action replay if I ever get to it, is Art of Fighting 2. Now you want a cheap game, like a really just badly programmed game, play that game. That game is, my god, like that game is, is so hard. But yeah, join me, Scott, together. Oh, the dream hasn't failed. Humans and mutants will find a way to exist peacefully. You'll just... Ah, you're just like that fool, Xavier. Yoink. And he just kind of, like, nailed us. Is everyone all right? Alive and well, is it over? Stop talking and start running, bub. I know he didn't say bub, but I wanted to say it. I think that's Asteroid M. What did he gain by destroying himself? You sure he didn't survive, Psyche? No, he always returns. I wonder if you'll be able to stop him next time. Next time it's him you better worry about. Bad voice acting is bad. Welcome back. Gene. We won't see you until Marvel vs. Capcom 3. I'm glad you're safe. I was worried. Jeez, won't you two knock it off? We have an emergency. Omega Red has been spotted. Engaging police units nearby. Okay, let's go. And off they go into the next battle. So yeah, guys, that was X-Men Children of the Atom. Hope you guys liked it. I again, I just want to, you know, apologize that I had to resort to using a an action replay to get you guys this this let's play. But honestly, as I mentioned a lot of times, this game is just hard for me. I don't know what it is. I just cannot beat it. I I'll be the first one to admit that I it may just be that I suck at this game, that I just cannot do the the combos the way that everybody you know some other people can. But again, I, I needed to do this game. I needed to go ahead and get this out of the way because, as I mentioned, this is the precursor to the Versus series. Um, and I do want to get to those games eventually. Now, the next game that I'm going to be doing in this series, in the Versus series, is Marvel Super Heroes, which is the spiritual successor. Obviously, as you can tell, um, that game has more variety as far as Marvel Super Heroes are concerned. There are some X Men that return, but again, it's mostly around Marvel Super Heroes. Uh, quick fact, there's uh, Akuma is, is also unlockable in this game, which for all intents and purposes, you can kind of see that as the very, very first time that you guys saw a crossover from Capcom. So again, that's another kind of hint to, or another thing that let you know that this is a precursor to the Versus series. Sort of like a preview of things to come in the future. And the only thing that's left now is for me to put my initials there, and I resorted to putting ASS because that's how I felt playing this game using an action replay. <sighs> yeah, that was kind of douchey for me. Anyway, guys, that was it for me. I will see you guys in my next Let's Play, and uh, yeah, Marvel Super Heroes is next. See you guys later. Bye. As always, if you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you want to get more stuff from me. In the meantime, if you like my videos, be sure to find me on Twitter, Tumblr, Raptor, and ScrewAttack.com to see the other gaming-related content that I upload. Info is in the description. Who knows? Maybe you'll like my stuff. Maybe? Maybe?